is 636 and I am calling to order the regular meeting of the Hubbardston Planning Board. Uh, planning Board meetings are broadcast live and digitally recorded. This meeting is being held both in person and virtually through Zoom. Uh, pursuant to the COVID-19 rules allowing public meetings to be conducted remotely so that boards and committee members as well as members of the public can participate remotely. And just a note there, we are looking to keep track of what's going on with those rules. We don't know what's going on yet, but we are looking. All right, uh, are there any public comments? Seeing no members of the public, we are going to advance in the agenda. Are you sure? <laughs> Pass the flowers, yep. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to minutes for acceptance. We have uh, four sets of minutes that are up, uh, and let's let's take them one at a time. I did have um, a couple of questions and possible corrections on those. Let's go with, I think that is February. Yeah, let's go with February. Let's see which one opens up first. Uh, I guess this is actually, let's go with November 18, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve minutes. Okay, we're hearing first. Do we have a second? I second the motion. Hearing a first and a second. Uh, let's have discussion. Uh, I do have a question on this, uh, members present, we have uh, uh, Alice, Francois, and Bill, and Bill members absent, it's blank. Uh, I think I was at this meeting, but I was definitely either at the meeting or absent. Uh, and <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> same, <laughs> same for, uh, for Mr. DeMolia. Yep. Yes, have a seat. Uh, so uh, that that should be something that gets updated. Uh, other than that, they look like they were in reasonable shape for me, but I'll pause for a little bit for everybody to scroll through because I see that you are. I've, I read them. <coughs> I don't have any problems with them. I, I have no idea. Although the, the votes on them, Looking at the votes on, they were 3-0 three, three is the vote. So uh, I imagine that means I was not at the meeting and that John wasn't either, or else the votes wouldn't be noted 3-0. So we probably just need to be added to absent. Yeah, I was on the board in 2021. I, I can't remember breakfast, so. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, I remember these discussions. Yeah, because oh, this no, this was the first meeting where we were talking about the um, country uh, club option. Yeah, country yes. club option. Yeah. yeah, I missed that meeting and then was at the next one. I was mm -hmm. away traveling, so yeah, that that would be the correction for that. Okay. Any any other corrections or updates? Just some minor spelling things. Since again, I'm just making them here, and they'll be automatically reflected in the document that I save store. <coughs> No big issue. Any other comments? No. All right, so I'm hearing no further discussion. Let's have a vote on acceptance. Schneider, aye. Lipto, aye. Holman's aye. Camellia, aye. And the chair is aye. The motion comes. <coughs> so the next one is let's do. I want to take you in chronological order. Uh, 2022 is the next one. Yeah, what's the file name on that? That's so. 2022, I'm sorry, PV underscore minutes underscore 20220106. Okay, that is the one I opened. So January 6, 2022. Can I get a, a motion for acceptance? I'll put a motion that we accept the minutes for PV minutes for uh, Jan 6, January 6, 2022. And a second? I will second. Here in a first and a second, any discussion? Quick, quick note um, on this is, <clears throat> I don't know whether, I put these corrections in, but I don't know whether you had them or not. Um, they show up in yellow in the posted, so maybe it's what I put in last time and then we didn't get to it. But anyway, with, with other attendees on that list, you list Ann Jeff Blake, 
I think after that, you should just put um, counsel for Hubbardston from KP Law to identify who he is. And then there were a couple of typos, but we probably fixed them. And they're not important anyway. Yeah, on these older minutes, I <coughs> go through quickly looking for typos. Okay. And that I don't change them as they come in from Andrew. <laughs> I'm well, not, I'm not architectural watching these. and aesthetic. Did you spell aesthetic right? <laughs> The other one. If you did that one, then you probably caught all the rest too. It's on uh, the board reviewed the following. It's about the fifth bullet point, seventh bullet point. Architectural. Isn't that one of those words you can spell two ways, like airplane? Well, I just had to look it up to correct yeah. it. So you know. Oh, maybe it is a two-way spelling. Anyway, that was the only thing. I just thought Jeff Blake, because you know he was sitting in for Carolyn, yeah, and I thought if he ought to be tagged as who he was. All right, anything else on those? Here, no further discussion. Let's have a vote. Schneider, aye. Look aye. Pullman's aye. Gamelli, aye. And the chair is aye. Motion carries. So, next on the list is. February 1, uh, 2023 0201. Yep, uh, do we have a motion? Put a motion that we accept the minutes for. Uh, 2023, February 1, as uh, presented. A second. We'll hear in a first and a second. Any discussion? And these ones uh, I thought looked pretty good. All right, hearing no discussion, let's have a vote. Steiger, aye. Right. Lipto, aye. Holmes, aye. Denali, aye. Monroe, aye. aye, aye, aye. Motion carries. Uh, and the last one is our last set of minutes, and this is um, so 16. This is our most recent meeting. Um, just to catch everybody up on what happened, we had um, we had come in, and there was no internet in the room, and we'd advertised it as a hybrid meeting, and uh, I was expecting members from the public and members of the board to participate remotely, so. Uh, we decided, well, we shouldn't do this meeting. And we just talked uh, about a couple administrative matters and then uh, adjourned the meeting. But the, uh, the minutes are there. Uh, I would like to suggest one correction there um, is that in the first paragraph, it was not solely due to Member Steiger's inability to participate. It was members. So it would be Member Steiger and Member Damalia, or else it would just be a member. All right. Any anything else on those? Uh, how about a motion? I make a motion with the minutes of February sixteenth, twenty twenty-three. I second that motion. All right. And, and uh, any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, let's have a vote. Steiger aye. Lupto aye. Holmes aye. Mali aye. Monroe aye. The minutes are accepted. Does this mean all the minutes are up to date? No, no, <laughs> no. We're still working backwards. <laughs> there, there's a lot of 2020 and 2021. 20 no, but you're catching them here and there. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, they're they're all on the list. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make it complete. It's just gonna take another couple months. Yeah, we're we're making good progress. That's wonderful. So Thank next, you. I presume you're Mr. Picari. Yes. Yep. Well, next on the agenda is uh, Parcel 2-76, Ron Picari, New Templeton Road. Seeking information on the ANR process to divide this 5.5 acre lot with 450 feet of frontage. Possible construction, it's enormous. So come on up. I have a, an older ANR which you signed when I had sold off the easternmost portion. This piece here was divided off with the original six and a half acres because the neighbor here had only 20 foot side bounds uh, on each end of his house. So he wanted to be able to expand. So that's 
that's out of the picture. And I've drawn a, I've made a copy of that, and I've drawn a, uh, a layover of what I'd like to do now. So this is gone. This is 450 feet of frontage, which just by shit, shit luck is enough to do a single a single family home and a two family home here as by right, with a little bit left over. And the acreage is enough to uh, satisfy the requirement to add, uh, I think it's 30,000 square foot for each, for each uh, residence. And I meet all that. There's no. That's but what is, uh, Mr. Chair? What is the total acreage that you currently have there? Five and a half. Five and a half. Okay. So just confirming that. So even even without the proposed parcel, right? That 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 does that does not include that. Correct. That's Perfect. gone. Yeah. It just happens to be on the drawing, so it was an easy drawing to use. This, this was posted on our documents. That's that's his original lot. That's, which is which lot it, is it from? It's this? lot two. Second, second one. Okay. Um, but the back portion of that lot is gone, as shown on his plan here. Okay. It was originally a six and a half acre lot. It's now a five and a half acre lot. Correct. Okay, that's five sectored by the utility easement. Yeah, and that no longer exists. I've gotten uh, a recorded document from them to remove it from across, diagonally across the lot to put it in this 30-foot offset here and rejoins the uh, original path over here. They haven't used it since 1963, I believe. And he said to me, if you find any wires, just cut them out. <laughs> we don't use any of them. It should be any. Honest to God. It's, but I've got it all recorded. It's all deeded. Uh, it took me two years because AT&T down in Atlanta was, you know, slow. Uh, there's a fella up here. I forget where he's from, but he was pretty helpful, an engineer that's in charge of this area for the AT&T right of ways like that. Okay. But anyway, they don't want it anymore. They have no need for it with all the satellites we got and all the different means of communicating. So I've got it documented that it comes actually from my front lot line here back 300 feet. Then it shoots over to rejoin the original one, which is here. So you live on lot one on mm -hmm. this plan? This is your house in the corner of a no, no, not at all. Crossroad and no, no. There's there's no structure currently on this lot. It's just land. Yeah. Oh, it's just land you own. Yes. Okay. Next to me, there is a house on the corner, log cabin, I believe, log home. I don't know those people. Um, this on New Templeton. Or yes. On Cross. Well, at the corner of Cross and New Templeton, there is another house. It is okay. a house. So, so I don't know all the rules and regulations about Hobbitson and their planning, but I do know there's a 75-foot front offset and there's a 30-foot side offset, which I've shown on there. Mm -hmm. And this is the intended home that I'd like to put in there. Um, the is a wetlands that crosses here. It's a seasonal wetlands are very, very minor in nature, but I guess it has to be, obviously has to be taken care of. And documented, yes. And nothing will, at this point in time, the, the, the parcel that you're looking at, I'm just trying to understand here, so you have one parcel that would be yeah. this one here, which yeah. is the 250 Correct. feet frontage? Yep. And that would go all the way to the back, or how? Yeah, all the way to the back. Okay. I, I didn't show it that way. You, I've got to have 110,000 square feet to make this one work, and whatever it takes for the uh, the draftsman to draw it out, you know, it'll be at least that. And then you have a 200 feet. <coughs> Correct. What are these lines here? I'm just trying to understand these. That's, that's what's confusing the, me. Th that's what the draftsman put on when this was an A and R. You see, he, he just shows the new uh, boundaries of the three pieces, actually two pieces, the one for himself for that for this lot to be sold. They, they, they don't participate in our discussion here at all. Yeah. Uh oh. Or then, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, so those can be removed. Oh, yes. Those won't. The, those, next, those, those the next level of drawing won't include any of a lot okay. of this. It's just convenient to have this drawing. It's. 
already exists. It's already there. He, he's just here on a preliminary. I already paid for it once. This is not yeah. No, no, yeah. it's yeah. not yeah. Yeah. I, I, I understand. <laughs> but, I mean, if he's asking the question, my, my, what I'm trying to inquire here is, is what do these things represent so that we can provide yeah. the right information? These right. don't participate at all. Very good. Okay, so basically, you know, so if this. you think about it, it's just 250 feet, straight line down. Correct. And uh, all the way up to the boundary of parcel yeah, 8. Yeah, and that's what I've shown here with this red arrow. I didn't draw it yeah. all the way back, but... It's the only, and 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 the only only wetland that you have is the one that you have at this point in time mildly marked there with right. the, it, it the kind of goes like squiggles across uh, okay. to Mary Ann the uh, Pinto's house I think her name is mm -hmm. so we have a rule that you have to show the wetlands or have the surveyor um, state that there's at least what forty thousand square feet of upland is that right something like that I have a list uh, yes yeah. Yeah, and then there's some other things he has to put on. Are you going to go back to Mr. Sazak? Sock? Who? Is the surveyor? Sock? No, I don't know him. Oh, do you, you have a surveyor that did this? Who did yeah, this? Yeah, uh, this Capco guy that I so use good. regularly. Oh, so he could go back, so he's got yeah. this work. Okay, yes. he, he would be familiar with our checklist. Okay, well, if you have a copy of it, I'd like to. I've got a copy for you. Yeah, it's, um, it's also published in our subdivision rules. What is it? For dot oh. That 40,000 square foot requirement would be I very can give him this copy. I have little notes on the side. The pencil's mine, but you can have it. Thank you. Yeah. That 40,000 square you foot upland is it very easily met with what I've got there from the wetlands. Perfect. You want to keep it? Way, way, way easily. Luckily, there's a surplus of land here and the exact right amount of frontage to do the two things I want to do. Uh, so ultimately, we just approved the NR. We're not certifying that it's buildable. We're not certifying right. that you meet any of the other requirements. We, ju right. we just ultimately certify that yeah, this this plan um, this plan meets the the plan itself meets these requirements that are imposed by our Correct. bylaw. So yeah, it seems reasonable for me on track. Uh, we obviously make our decision based upon the plans that are presented at the time. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to gather information right now. Yep. Um, is there any method, um, information you could give me regarding the wetlands? How close can my house be to the wetlands? Is that something that's common knowledge? That's not something I know off the top yeah, of my head. I don't know that. Is it 500 feet? I hope <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You wouldn't have a house <laughs> in Hubbard. We, 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 we do have an active building commissioner now, and he ultimately Oh, he does that, does yeah. that new building. I know you were without one for quite a while. Yep, we got a new one, Duffy. He is fantastic. He's very responsive. Yeah, I know Duffy. Yep, he's from Sterling. And it's not like you're building a driveway in the back there. No, sir. No, this would be a, this is going to be a two-car garage right here, yeah. and I'd probably have a little turnaround to back out and it'll come right into that uh, area. So this this is all in the back of your in, in, into what the projected. Uh, property uh, building would be. I don't get what you mean by back. Behind the house. Behind the, the house. Wetlands would a, you, you, oh, the you, wetlands. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yes. I've show, I taped it with a. I mean, I've got a, a accurate 100 foot tape, and it's 200 feet yeah. my lot line to roughly that edge. Remember, it's not like it's a canal. Yeah. It's a kind of a, a wetlands. You know. The, the biggest issue you may be confronted is if you had the wetland in front of your house. Oh yes, and right. you have a driveway and all of this crossing other, it and whatnot. That that's where you typically end up yeah. having this area here again is pretty substantial enough for the septic uh, needed for four bedrooms. You know, so I don't anticipate a problem there. And then you know, the well is the other thing you have to keep in mind. It has to be 100 100 feet away from the septic. Septic. septic, well. septic well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Again, I don't. Yeah. That'll yeah. be that'll be your first stop on this, you know, evaluating the feasibility here. And as indicated, it's not the planning board's issue. Yeah. Right. Or no. But yeah. I'm going to give you this to take with you. So thank you. This is your lot. Yep. And this area here is a 200 yeah, foot so. 200 foot setback from the little stream, wow. which has implications under Title V for your septic design. But mm -hmm. you know. Talk, talk to your designer, they'll have, yeah. they'll be able to advise you on how you can approach this. Okay, it just starts from here, there's not even any starting point, just whips out of the ground evidently. Huh? Yeah, I guess so. Because it dries up in the summer, with nothing there, just brown dirt. Yeah. Well, thank you, I appreciate this.
And anything else you can give me for advice? Um, There's a form you have to fill out. To, yep. to turn in the A&R? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I just download that off whatever you... I think if you sure. give your uh, the consultant or the person who's going to be doing you give yep. them that, they should be able to come up with a new plans and okay. then uh, ensure that you have sufficient copies when you come back. Yeah. Because one copy will stay with us and one gets recorded. At the right it gets recorded, etc. Yeah. Once so. it's approved, I have to record it, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And does that is there a distribution? I mean, do you give it to like the assessors or anybody else, or I bring enough copies? Or if you bring three copies, three copies, three copies. Probably including the, the mylar that we yeah. signed, and then you yeah. take the mylar to right. record. Record. Yep. Bring it to the registry, right? Yep. Well, okay. Is that it? Um, I, if you can give me other further advice, I always like advice from uh, the right place. I was on the Sterling Planning Board for 26 years. Uh, there, is, there really is nothing that more that we can give you at this point <laughs> in time, except that if you are going to follow these and make sure that you have a. Uh, surveyor and consultant who understands obviously what they need to do. Mm -hmm. They typically know how to make this happen and yeah. oftentimes they come here representing you at yes. that point in time so that if there's any questions that are more from our perspective, they can answer them right there and then. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty formulaic on the ANRs. There's really not a lot of surprises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I like to come go to this yep. introductory type thing because it's a, a good way of gathering information and not having uh, everybody scratching their head. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you've done the right thing. And we appreciate the yeah, fact that you are looking at this here proactively. Yeah. Well, thank you and good night. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you for coming on. Good luck. I had that plan for a long time. <laughs> I bought it in 1986. Oh, wow. A friend of mine was a realtor out here, and he says, I got a great deal for you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Uh, uh, you know, like, he worked for Norton Company. Oh, okay. I knew him real good. I can't think of his name right now. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, he, they're still great friends. They have no problem, but I just don't ever see him anymore. Well, well thank you again. Well, thanks for coming in. Yep. Stay Take safe. Care. And yeah. be well. So there is no one out there when I was coming in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so moving along the agenda. Old business. Uh, Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Thank Good you night. for coming. We don't have any that's not going to be covered in administrative matters. Uh, so, administrative matters. Review of proposed solar bylaw revisions. So, I would like to, um, I'd like to kick this off as kind of a general discussion on what everybody's thinking and uh, really ask Alice to kick it off because she spent more time looking at this than anyone else. So uh, Alice, let us know what your thoughts are. Well, you know, the timeline here was two years ago, we sort of stopped because M MRPC came in, right? But at the time we stopped, we had, we were very close to, but two, we, we had done two things. We've done, if you wanted to put band-aids on the existing bylaw, and that's in here, um, you could go that route. Or if you wanted to follow Ethel's model, which was much clearer and included a lot of other things, like, for example, our bylaw that with one of the changes is an aerial picture, right? But it's much more sophisticated to do, to do a, a sight line drawing you know, which was what it would actually look like from the street, because you can't really tell from me. So anyway, Bill looked at all of them, and then we, and then it just came to a screeching halt. So, I mean, I have a lot of information, but I think that, you know, you got to decide. Do you want to? Do you want to try to do it? Did you did you get the this list? Did this was this on the list? No. Okay. Uh, Maybe not. Maybe I, believe I sent to you. I believe that got distributed to everybody. Okay, so it it was a basically a list of in the email sent, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, basically a, a list of <coughs> the major issues we tried to address by by proposed amendments to the existing bylaw. So those were we added the best, we changed, and I don't think there was a I can't remember whether there was really a consensus on this or not. Presently, you only need two acres to put a solar field up. This would increase the minimum to five. And they have to be with 
sort of together with one continuous contiguous acre for siting purposes, meaning for the setbacks and everything else. Um, so we, we did put in that increase in minimum lot size. We put in technical specifications, limiting the height of the panels to eight feet and buildings to 10 feet. Um, the size of the best units, which are, which you, um, are kind of like a, kind of like a temporary building, you know, they look like a kind of a container, actually, but a size for those per kilowatt hour. Um, access, uh, pr prohibiting pesticides and herbicides. Uh, we increased the front setback to 100 feet, and this is a mistake on here. We also did the side and back to 75 feet, or to 50 feet. They're currently, so, they're, they're currently 25. We increased them to 75, that's what we did in that draft. And then we put in fencing provisions. So the things it didn't address was that the Athol bylaw had and that people were suggesting to us, and there's been some state, this original bylaw was based on, a, I think, a 2010 state model bylaw, right? So there's mm -hmm. been a lot of discussion and updating and so on. So the things that a new draft would do would be include the goal of protecting abutting landowners, community views, wildlife habitats, forests, those kind of things. Um, it would have, there is in the current bylaw no maximum capaci capacity in terms of how many megawatts you can build or the land area. So in theory you could put in a 100 acre solar field and there would be nothing to stop it. We had discussed in, a, in the draft proposes a 20 acre maximum for a solar field um, and a one a one megawatt um, which could then be doubled right if you put the best unit in you get almost the double output so you can get a lot more more uh, kilowatts out of the when you add the best unit but anyway those aren't in there so if you want a maximum they're not in there but they are in the proposed draft and there's no maximum field size either. So no maximum megawatts and no maximum field size. There's no pr prohibition or limit against clear cutting, um, except there was one change in the, it wasn't included in the redraft of the, pr the additions to the present bylaw, which I can, which the present bylaw says the setback is 50 feet and you can clear up to half of it if it's shading the solar fields, which leaves you with very little space. So this is, moves it to 75 and says you can't cut it. Um, that's what we meant to do, and that, that would be, a, if you wanted to go with the, the Band-Aid approach, right, that's one Band-Aid that needs to be fixed. Um, so we also had a prohibition in this new one of, no, of using previously disturbed land. So farmland, gravel pit land, and not clear-cutting forests. But it does have an easement. Uh, uh, if you, it does allow you to cut some of the contiguous forest to get your uh, plan, to get your solar field built. But you can't just go in buy a forest and clear cut it. If you were to go with the proposed bylaw, um, there's the present the present or the, the proposed bylaw has a. Um, in addition to preference of citing it on disturbed land and gravel pits, um, I think this might too. It has a, a if, if you can prove that it works, you can get waivers, like the gravel pit that might be a place where you'd want to put 100 acres. And mm -hmm. you can say, ask a waiver from the 20 lot size. And so that would be another advantage of doing the new draft. Um, and um, it does require that, it does have a prohibition against, you know, ridgelines and hillsides. And, and it has a uh, provision for a study, a sight line study. Um, and there's also, at the moment, no, it can be limited, it can be located, assuming you have the acreage anywhere in town. So we did discuss, but we never got to whether you wanted overlays, what you wanted to do with that, but you still wanted to allow it everywhere in town. I mean, it makes some sense to allow it everywhere in town, but the ridge lines also really matter. Because if you look at like where the cell tower was proposed, right, that doesn't go through. That is a person that has Lake Ridge way in back, right? But the town, they won't even, they're complaining about a cell tower. Imagine clear cutting up for the solar field up there, you know? So 
So I, so I don't know. It was just, it was too much for me to sort out because a lot of things still need to be like decided by the board. Mm -hmm. But we did decide last time we don't want to separate into regulations and we're just going to put it all in, right? Mm -hmm. So that's <coughs> that's the short, the short version of where we are. If you really wanted to try to get one to town council, I mean to the town meeting. Um, this wouldn't be that hard to do with the band-aids. Uh, the other one needs does need some more work, but a lot of it's editing work, yeah. like integrating the best into all the other provisions. And so I don't know what you want to do, but so I feel bad. I felt like I spent thousands of hours on this. <laughs> you know, well, there's so a lot of good are. work on it. So <laughs> from is. from a procedural standpoint, uh, if it was to go to this town meeting we would have to refer to the select board tonight. So we would have to be able to walk away from this meeting and say, hey, this is something that we think is in a place where we recommend sticking it on the warrant. So I guess the threshold question um, that determines where we go with this tonight is, where's everybody at and what are you thinking? Um, is this something we want to try to work through with the Band-Aid approach, or do we want to spend a little more time working on the broader approach that we also have a draft of? Um, what's, what's the board's appetite? I think I'd feel more comfortable going with the Band-Aid approach just for now. Can we do that just to protect us more, and then work on the other provision over the next year, and then go back and do it again? Does that make sense? If that's the board's will, we could absolutely do that. Yeah. What do you think? Do you want to leave the things as they are now? Because I don't think we have enough time to do the rewrite. Uh, definitely not for a complete rewrite. I do believe there are advantages of taking what uh, has been presented as the Band-Aid approach, which I, I, I don't look at it as a Band-Aid. I look at it as something <laughs> that is already. Uh, no, I, I, I look at it as something that is already beneficial. Right. There, there, there are changes in there that are required and needed. Uh, and it's an incremental process, mm -hmm. and so we've, 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 as Alice has mentioned, she put a lot of work into this here a couple of years ago. There are right. components in there that can be already leveraged, lifted, and put as part of this, uh, the upcoming meeting. And I think there's no reason why we should not consider that as a viable option, and then continue progressing with the, rema the remaining items. Do you want to? So let's refer to it as the incremental approach. <laughs> I like Band-Aid better. <laughs> I think, I think the no bells and whistles. The new bylaw, but we can't get it done tonight. So no we should do something to protect the town for the well, next we year yeah. and then put in the new one next year. Well, why don't we? Because I think we need the new one, but there's no way that's getting done tonight. No. Not right. in a satisfactory manner that won't require more fixes. Correct. Anyway. Yeah. At least it's been a lot of work put into it, so that would give us a good good base good to start from. To talk about. Well, I think you ought to, we ought to walk through the. If you're going to want to do that tonight, mm -hmm. we could walk through this one, which is in your draft. Yep. Uh, and we could walk through the, the yellow lines are pretty much the, the changes. Yep. And then I've got this one change. I didn't get in there. I think it's on the back. So. Um, but I could do that, and then you could have a sense why well, we agree on this stuff. Because I don't think we ever like really had a vote on the twenty. Well, there is no size limit. Maybe everything in this was already agreed. I'm not sure, but I think we should walk through it. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Make, yeah. I think we should walk through it too. Yeah. Uh, in well, this has been something you've worked on for a long time, and, and in honor of your last time meeting with us, <laughs> would you care to to walk us through the changes? Sure, sure, sure. All right, and the and the one that's missing. Is in the back. Okay, so. If you can call it up, um, there's a couple things. So just just to make sure we're all on the same page in in our documents, this is referred to as solar bylaw with revisions, correct? I think that's right. And sadly, I think I bumped a line in mine, and that's going to make it a little confusing. But that's all right. We'll get there. All right. I'm sorry. Which one are we looking at now? Is this draft new about solar bylaw? Uh, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out to be sure. I had, we have, I had a button. We have draft new hub, and then we have uh, solar draft number three. Solar draft number three. This is solar draft. That's number what I three. Oh, so solar draft number three is what we should be looking at. Okay. 
and I lost it here. You want to use this? I got to go no, no, no. Today's okay. date. Today's date. Yeah. Uh, right there. Bring it. All these years, and I haven't figured out how to use this stupid Chromebook. <laughs> Solar Draft <laughs> number three is MRPC's product. <laughs> oh, it's not Solar Draft oh. number three. Any book okay. documents? No. I gotta get to the meeting. That's just ridiculous. Slide, okay. slide down. Twenty twenty three. I'm not sure. Let's slide down again. Hold it. There you go. Three one oh, three zero one. That's yeah. And then in here you go uh, slide oh, down. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. this doesn't Solar have all the yellow marks. Solar bylaw. Solar bylaw. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the folder. Yep, yeah, that's the folder. Yeah, I, I did this. And okay. then now go into where it says PV uh, 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 twenty twenty one. It's not easy to get there. This is 2021. Oh, yeah, okay. And in there is the one that is on the bottom. That's the one. Because there's also the one that that's it. He's yeah. right. That's the way we go. That's what I thought that, we were talking about, one. and that's not any of No, these. that's not it. I, that's the, the new one. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a different version that you emailed that was also distributed to the board. Um, Maybe we could run copies, right? Let me, let me, let me, throw, the, uh, let me throw the one from the email up there, and let's all look at that one. Yeah. <laughs> Right no, here, no. draft number three. No, that that's the re, the whole rewrite. Okay. So this one though I did send. I did oh. send. Yeah, Mark, Mark's loaded it in right now. Okay. You're uploading it into the uh, shared shared drive. Yeah. yeah, that way we can have one copy. Just, yeah. That. <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. You hope. Now we've got solar bylaw with revisions. Is that the one? Solar draft. Wait, where is this now? In email? Back to email. Back to email? Um, Did you just share it by email? Refre refresh your Google. If you're drive. on the Google Drive, refresh it. And it's 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 drive. And the solar bylaw with revisions. Right. How do you refresh it? You have it right there. That's the one. Oh. Easy peasy. If that was easy, I'd hate to see it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is it. All right, so. Okay. And it Thank should God. have. All right, solar it, by law with It has visions. highlights on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the you, uh, copy, one I have is just copy. like a tiny bit off. Yeah. Uh, all, but this is all zoning districts. Okay, it's it. So we can go. Okay, so we'll use the one here and I'll just check it against this. Okay, so no, so this doesn't make any changes. So only focus on the highlighted sections? Only focus on the highlight. This otherwise it is what I believe exactly like it's Can you see? I printed a copy. Oh you printed it? Yeah, so you're smart. Well, I, I, it I believe it is you know, I mean I haven't I couldn't I couldn't devote hundred hours this week to figure out everything, but I believe this is exactly a copy of our present bylaws with the highlights <laughs> being the additions. I believe that's right. That was what I was guessing. <laughs> okay, and if if that's but somebody needs to actually truly check that and make sure that I did nothing got cut or anything, but I don't think it did. Okay, so you got 20 20.25, 20 right? Down at the bottom of the first page. It includes uh, solar battery storage. Mm -hmm. So that and then solar battery storage is defined, which is the definition next to that. Well that and then, okay, and so then you go get no number of changes to get to 20.2.12 20 lot size. And this makes a minimum lot from 80,000 square feet, which is roughly two acres to five acres. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and there's also, something in blue there, so that yes, is okay, also so that lots must conform to zoning setbacks for each district as they are located and is crossed out because we've put new setbacks that are bigger. That are 100 in front, yep. 75 feet from the side, and then this, this a minimum of one continuous acre must be available for siting. So this, this makes it clear that you, you, you know, you have to have an acre set aside for siting. I mean, it's a little bit confusing, but the idea was actually Bill Murray's idea. He says, so if somebody comes in and they say, okay, I can buy my, put my wall-to-wall -wall panels. You know, now he, he says you do need space for equipment and maintenance, and so that's all got to be provided too, and, we, and for the setbacks. And 
So you could build, uh, so you would. I don't know if it's going to be clear to a reader what citing is yeah, in this context. Yeah, <laughs> that was the idea. Yeah. So you could, we could just put it, um, Carmel Lots, wait a minute. We could just, no, no dwelling or other structures except those structures that. No, the, it, it continues on yeah, the it's on to the next page on, that are on the next page. that are part of the facility. No dwelling or other yeah. zoning districts. This continues on the next. If you go yeah. a little bit further down, that's where it continues, right? Okay, there. all right. So you're fine. My printouts. So that was the idea. Maybe you don't need that. Maybe you want to take out the blue and just say five acres, and that's implicit in it. All the works would have to be because you do have to do the setbacks, right? Yeah, yeah. I think what. Um, and this was this was an issue that got raised with the marijuana bylaw, because we we had suggested setbacks that made it very difficult to do it in the acre size that we had specified. Like a, a parcel would have had to be in a perfect square, or else it would not have been possible to do it because of what the setbacks were. Um, I don't I don't think that comes up as. The, the uh, redo has the ways to calculate the area okay. as part of it. So maybe we just, with if you have five acres, you can put a solar field can, in it. Can we so stipulate uh, maybe with approval of the planning board, we can modify something? You know, just in case it doesn't fit, they can still come and talk about it. Well, you can always, you can always ask for a waiver. Right. So can, we, can we mention that in there just in case it doesn't fit? We can always tell somebody no, but if, it, if it's just a slight modification because of the terrain. Well, I guess we, we could, but I guess ultimately the question at the moment is, is that blue session, section even really necessary? No. Okay. Well, here's the question. Yeah. If I, I'm trying to remember whether we have, because I, I have these two, these two are running parallel in my mind, right? Um, in the siting, can you put this on a house lot? I'm sorry, can you put it what? Okay, if you had a five acre lot and you already have a house on it, would you be allowed to put a commercial, you know, these are a big solar field on it? Yeah, I guess that's a question. Or whether it has to be like a dedicated five acres to, for exclusive use as a solar field. You know well, I mean? no, no dwelling or other structures except those that are part of the facility are out on the so that'd be no. Okay, so that's in there. So why don't we just, since it is ambiguous and I too muddled tonight to tell you what the actual thinking was, eliminate the blue line. All right. So it's a straight five acre. And we're talking about what we're proposing. Not proposing right. anything till we get to the end and everybody's agreed anyway. All right. So who on their computer, uh, Mark, are you keeping the official yeah. on that? Okay. So, so then go down Mark to will do the official edits. I mean, these weren't these weren't like huge numbers of, of things. They were just sort of basic things. Um, okay, so now we're down to 20.3.1. That's the next change. Compliance with laws and other regulations. Oh, that was just adding the battery energy storage units, right? Yep. So construction yep. shall be consistent with the applicable state, including these, all right? Um, and the we actually should add in there and the and the bylaw, our bylaw regarding battery and storage, which didn't exist. So it should be we all scale, the, the construction and operation of all large scale solar photovoltaic <laughs> installations, including battery, shall be consistent with all applicable. Well, we have local. Yep. So yeah. we might put local, state, and federal requirements. Do you want to put a separate thing in, in um, regarding the best provision or bylaw? I'm, I'm reluctant to put in specific references because when things get updated over time, those specific references get right. very often. Okay. Get updated. okay, well, that's yeah. it. So it's got to comply with local. Let's tell you, this, these were basic band aids. I don't think any detail. All right. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's, that's covered. There. I think this was done before Francois and I began to have the best. Well, and I have a question related to that too. So we have we have it now in here, including solar battery energy or solar battery storage. Um, do we need to 
update that with the or reference the definition. I hate to yeah, why don't you do but the definition of battery battery energy storage system. Yeah, why don't we do, by law. do that? I, just just do a word change from battery energy storage to battery energy storage system, and then best. Does that right? make? Does everybody think that makes sense? I think yes. it makes sense because it <laughs> makes it consistent across the bylaw. Right, right, right. right one, one more time. So instead of solar battery storage, all of that should just be battery energy storage system, the same way it's defined in the best bylaw. And then you can put in parentheses B. B capital E capital SS like we did in our bylaw yeah. and refer to it. You can do a word search and do that. Because it does appear a number of times. And it, we that's what kicked off this whole set of revisions to begin with. Um, because they added it, remember, as a, a sort of a, a storage building, right? And that was not right. right. Okay, so so we can do that. He, we can do that. That wouldn't be hard. All right, so Next is 2342 required documents. Yeah, required documents, plan showing. So the difference here is the five. Go to uh, Roman numeral five under that. And I think this was actually Bill Murray's suggestion again. Uh, so it's, it's this language, uh, documentation of major system components to be used, including the PV panels, mounting system, and inverter and there you put the best again right change it there and yep. then with technical specifications of the major system components including solar arrays mounting system electrical equipment other supporting equipment and structures new arrays panels shall exceed a height of eight feet accessory battery units and the cooling equipment shall not exceed 10 feet in height and are limited to one 50 foot long by 15 wide by 10 foot tall unit per two megawatt system. Now, what did we finally, with the best, we allowed them to go up to this 10? section is a site plan requirement. Yeah. And we've suddenly gone into... Should we even have that in there? Height re restrictions? Um, with technical specifications, you could, is there another section called technical specifications? Yeah, it, it seems like everything that starts with the no arrays panels that should be in a different section. Dimensions and density requirements, maybe 20.38 with the setbacks and the and the fencing. You could move it to dimensions, because they are dimensions, right? So with setbacks is the first section of that, and then screening. I don't know, apparently you can, the solar panels, come in a lot of different sizes. Well, there there's 20.3.8.2. Um, with, yeah, which is solar panels. Uh, and a pertinent and a structures, structures and fencing. fencing. That's probably where it should That be. seems like where that should go. Okay, so if you want to, if you agree with the statement in that. Oh, um, actually, it's... Is, is eight feet a reasonable requirement? That's what I wasn't sure, like how big are standard buildings for these right. types of things. If I that came from Bill Murray, he knows, but if we came up with those numbers, then I don't know. I wouldn't have any way. Or if it came from another plant, right? In this plant, where it was. Maybe the height requirements should be something that we look into in that in the revised bylaw rather I than think the band aid. That yeah. may have come from. Just so that we don't inadvertently make sure that no one can put a solar panel in. Well, we can also. Also, there's another issue here is this limits it to a two megawatt system of capacity. Yep. We can one building for a two megawatt, and we approved under best 10 megawatts. Did we well, that's no, 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 one no, unit per, per two per megawatt, per two system. megawatt. Oh, okay. So technically, yeah. if you right. had exactly. 10 megawatts, you could have five buildings. Right, yeah. right. I think this is right. I don't think I winged it, but I can't I, I pull you from, right. from my head exactly. Yeah. Was, this, is, I, this is correct. Okay, I think it's correct, but we can... Yeah. I'll look it up again. I, um, I think, yeah, I think these are standard units. For the, remember, we went out there when we walked. Well, this is, yeah, for that so time. Been from then engineers. For, for that time, and, and, and quite frankly, these are changing because there's a lot, there's a lot more density in, in, in these units nowadays. They yeah. get smaller. The buildings or more. Well, it changes. Or you can, no, you can, you can, you can put more megawatts in a, um, in a storage unit. 
Okay. All right. Well, I think this is right. But you're, the way you describe it here, that it shall not exceed. Yeah. 50 right? by 15 by 10 high. Should we I, I, think, I think we should consider taking that out for now and putting that in the more substantive provision. That's my opinion as well. I agree with that. Okay. Okay. Because to Francois's point, the technology is evolving pretty quickly. So. Okay. And we need to have our bylaw be able to accommodate that too. Yeah. Well, and we, we know... We know from hearing from the public uh, in a couple of times when they've showed up to talk about other things, uh, the the idea that solar sight lines are important to them, and mm -hmm. I think we're doing a good job addressing that. The fact that they, they want setbacks, I think we're doing a pretty good job addressing that. I haven't heard any specific complaints about like heights of the panels, although I can see how that could potentially be evolved in sight mm -hmm. lines. But if, if we have good coverage on the sidelines to block the view of it. Yeah, and it's something we can work through. Right, in in a bigger plan, we can Correct. address heights once we confirm reasonable heights. Yeah, because in, in terms of thinking about the big picture and where this could come up in a short amount of time is, we, we have had people reach out to us informally about solar, um, putting in solar in the last year or so. But ultimately what the limiting factor has been is um, it's been the public utility. It's it's the ability it's to not, absorb it. Yeah, it's not been us. There hasn't been room in the grid, or it wasn't in an area where there was three phase power. There were issues like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there there will be projects that likely come back in within the next year. So we definitely want something that we can live with, and we are definitely going to hear more <coughs> of these before we get a chance. There's going to go gonna be one going up off the of Westminster Road in the near future. So let's take out the sentence that begins, no array, <coughs> no array's panel shall exceed eight feet, but leave the first highlighted end of that, yes. technical yeah. specifications there. Yes. Okay. And then... Um, and the following sentence, starting with accessory battery units. Uh, yes. Accessory battery and cooling, right, right, yeah. right. The sentence before that you leave in, but, the, that, but that sentence you take out. Is that two sentences? Yeah, two, two sentences. sentences. Okay, all right. So then, um, again, I'm trying to remember, but so with this seven, the drawings and photographs, this would be the minimum of what you'd want. And I don't know what our, what is the present bylaw? I must have, have not have this in it. Name, contact information, see, proponents. This, this actually should be another Roman numeral because it's not related to the contact information, right? So it should be V. VIX, I got those wrong numerals. Drawings, photographs, and studies showing color renderings not less than one inch to 50 feet, showing sight line views from abutting streets and properties of the proposed installation. So they do, you do have some sight line studies, right? Let's say if you're heat, you know, on this street, this is what you're going to see. Color aerial view, both before and after proposed installation, showing tree coverage and buffer zones, again, that scale, and a glare analysis, which apparently is important on some of these. Are, are, are these things defined anywhere? Or is it I think, clear to people what we're I talking think, about? Uh, <laughs> I think they were, again, this is done with kind of Bill's help. Um, I think they, they're standard technical stuff, color renderings of the scale, views from abutting streets and properties, and aerial photographs, right? I mean, I don't think you need definitions for clarification, but I do think it should be VIX, right? Uh, you got to submit. And I'm wondering, yeah, why does it say, if any? Oh, it's and is the, because it's just a list, right? So you could take the and out and just have drawings. Okay, so this would be IX drawings. Yeah, photographs, photographs and studies showing. Okay. That, that makes sense now. So it's okay. not related to, the, to Roman 8. Right, but it is part of the uh, required documents. This would go a long way to, to letting people see what they're going to be looking at. The aerial photography right, and the right. sight lines. So, so what you're saying is, is the site plan includes Roman 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, and, and now nine. number nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then 
Oh, but that's maybe eight. Oh, okay. No, it's it's nine, and I guess that's let's see. Documents of actual perspective access. A site plan showing, okay, those things. And then B, documents of actual perspective access and control operation maintenance plan. Okay, that makes sense. None of those were changes, yep. right? Proof of liability insurance, financial, okay, goes on. All right, so then it's, we're up to 20.36 operation and maintenance plan. This again is like, this was, I think, Bill Murray's. So it's the operation maintenance plan. He wanted to add, this plan shall include Measures for maintaining year-round safe access for emergency vehicles, snow plowing, stormwater controls, and general procedures for operating and maintaining the energy facility. Where are we? Including uh, operational, yeah. operational Fire maintenance Fire access plan. road and landscaping. Operation and maintenance plan, and of course, with the use of pesticides, which also wasn't prohibited, and people feel strongly about, and herbicides. And that was one we've had to fight for, in one of our Mm -hmm. uh, special permits. I think that's okay because it is an operating and maintenance. How are you going to maintain it? You got to mm -hmm. maintain it, cutting it, not with pesticides. All right. Is so that's why that was there. And is that a it. reasonable restriction? It is. It is. It's actually being used by several towns right now. Okay. That was what I was going to ask too. Yeah, it is. It is. <coughs> um, especially with all of the. A lot of people don't want the stuff applied. They don't, and this, and they gave it to us. On a, I think it was ninety one, Westminster was the one I went we, mm -hmm. and then there was the other one that had the battery energy storage system. But one of those two specifically, we said this is what we want because other towns are doing, it. and they said we can do that, just okay. mow it. All right. So then utility notification. All right. So nothing. You jump down, twenty point three point eight one setbacks. Ah, uh, the front, front yard depth shall be a hundred feet. Because you're, yeah, you need to include the word B because you crossed yes. it out. Shall be 100 feet instead of whatever it is in the zoning districts, it's an extra 100 feet. Now, there's something should you can debate about, but what we had was should it be at least 100 feet? The rest of them say at least, yeah, that one says yeah. just shall be, yeah, at least. Sorry, you're 102 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> side yard, and the side yard's to 75 feet. 75, yeah. The rear, 75. And then screening and buffering may require a separate setback C section. I don't know where, where that's from, because that section doesn't look familiar. No, that is, I don't think that that's correct. That's that section. So I think that maybe you just want to strike that line. Again, I'm trying to get basic, right? Yeah. But the one thing you have to, which maybe should go in here is, it actually occurs later, but the present bylaw says later on, 3.3.10. We're getting close to this. Three, no, two, three, ten, two. So we're coming up on this. All right, let's just progress and when we get there, I'll, I'll put in. Okay, so solar panels and appurtenant, stru appurtenant structures and fencing. Um, that has to be reasonable, right? That's the whole big weight. Okay, so this that's the way you can get at the bulk and the height, right? Shall be subject to reasonable, but not limited to shelters and the battery energy storage facility. That's what's the correction there. And then fencing wasn't specified in the other bylaw. So we had talked about putting fencing not greater than eight feet and shall surround the entire field and shall be placed four inches above the ground to allow migration of wildlife. That's a sort of an important new thing that people mm -hmm. are doing. And solid fencing may also be required at the discretion of the planning board. Um, maybe you don't want to make it, maybe you don't want to say discretion of the planning board. Um, if the planning, maybe you want to say, uh, if the planning board, I mean, you know, discretion means, hey, no matter what, this is our discretion. Put a solid fence around your five acres, right? Maybe that's not what we want to do. Maybe you want to say solid fencing may 
also be required, if necessary, to screen the view, to adequately screen the view. Would that be better wording? Required, if necessary. Yeah, I think so. They're going to want to fence it all off anyways. They will, but this is solid fencing, which is much more expensive. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And we got into that, actually, with the tower. Remember, it said, so, you know, solid fencing, and it's up there on the hilltop, right? Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. So I think that would be better. But you could see a situation okay. where that might be a reasonable requirement. So the language there was? Was... Solid fencing may also be required, if necessary, to adequately screen uh, view of the solar facility. We had this horrible fight with 91. I guess you got, most of you guys were here, right? Where they, we had the guy clear cut, or maybe there was nothing planned there anyway. Mm -hmm. But he wrote, but, but he was allowed to clear. It only was. 75 feet and you were allowed to clear half of it if it screened the view so you're down to 35 feet right. he took out the wall and the neighbor across the street just went ballistic went so we tried to fix it by saying okay we'll put these dirt mounds on the front and you go, go by it and you'll just see Down here in Williams over really there. really not good. it looks better than it was At, well yes, yeah. about 100 feet I think it's reasonable to do 100 because you're not looking at just one little house there you're looking at forever right right so right. push it back anyway that was my thought. That's, that was the discussion, and that's where that came from. Land clearing. Uh, we missed D. Fencing shall consist of commercial grade. Oh, yeah, we did. That's right. <coughs> Galvanized chain link fence and the corner post. Seems reasonable. That's coated galvan. Yeah, I think that was, I don't know whether that was from Bill or from somewhere, but you can't yep. put up cheap fencing. Right? Yep. Yeah, that's that's right. Reasonable. All right, so. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so this is the next, if, if you go up to the top of the page, A, 1A, but my page breaks are slightly off. Um, Sorry about that. For... But under 23102 land clearing. Uh, Alice, for, for a moment, it's not, it's not in there as an edit, uh, but for 23.9 uh, design standards and lighting, do we just want to specify uh, dark sky compliant fixtures? and simplify yeah, that. Yeah, I have that language. Um, uh, well, it says where feasible lighting of, uh, of the solar photovoltaic insulation shall be directed downward and shall incorporate full cutoff fixtures. Uh, there's a, we can just reference the standard dark sky. And comply dark with sky dark compliant. sky. What is it called? And uh, be dark sky compliant. Yeah, it shall be lit with uh, only dark sky compliant fixtures. Do we, do we think that makes sense? Do we want to leave it as it is? That makes sense. With so local, state, it. and federal law, all lighting on the premises shall be motion active devices. Or do you want to add it as a separate sentence? Would be allowed unless allowed by the I mean, or we could just specify. Yeah. You just want to replace it with one sentence? Well, we could also just add it and specify fixtures shall be dark sky compliant. Okay. Yeah. Specified fixtures. Dark sky compliant, but you so put in. Is that sufficiently detailed to be meaningful? A dark sky. Uh, if it's not, we'll fix it at the public hearing. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I have, I don't know, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but. Glare. In the, in the, it had a better definition. Lighting. Okay, lighting shall include. Let's call the. And sh okay, so here's what in the the other revised version, it said lighting of uh, basically we have an acronym for the solar field, including a pertinent structure, shall be limited to that required for safety and operational purposes, shall be shielded from abutting properties, and shall comply with international dark sky standards FSA certification requirements. There shall be no illumination without personnel on site. Yeah. You want uh, to take that? Let's second? use that language instead. Okay. I'll take it out of my, take it out of this and send it down to our friend. 
Yeah, because that that really goes to the hot button issues that I think people are concerned about. They're concerned about the loop views and disruption to the neighborhoods, and that's a big one. Okay, so I circled it for Mark, and Mark, you can put a note on that replaces this. Right, so that, so that's the new language for 20.3.9 design standards lighting. If everybody agrees, right? Yes. With that. Okay. So there's something. Is GMSPI the applicable here? What's, what's GMSPI? Ground mounted solar photovoltaic yeah, that was, installation. Yeah, ground mounted solar. But you're going to make it whatever the. Photo, photovoltaic installations or something. All photovoltaic installations, including battery energy storage systems, or something, because we we haven't adopted that acronym. Yeah. That came from them. But there's something about the clear cutting that I don't want to lose track of. It's twenty three ten two. Okay, it's still coming up. All right, so maybe that's the next thing. So if you go down to the very last line in that page. 20, well, maybe it's the first line in your page. 20.3.10.2 land clearing. A. Okay, there it is. Yeah, on the draft, it says, land clearing of natural vegetation shall be limited to what is necessary for construction, operation, and maintenance of the solar system or otherwise prescribed by applicable law, regulations, and bylaws which have to be there because you have to have like gravel around these best systems and stuff. But then the next sentence is problematic. Existing vegetation shall remain as required in setback areas. And then what I would like to strike is except where such vegetation would shade the solar energy system. However, in no event shall the clearing of existing vegetation in the setback exceed half the required setback width. So if you do this, you're you're cutting our 75 acres to 100 feet frontage to 50. 50 feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to strike that. Except existing vegetation shall remain in the required setback areas. Period. That makes sense to me. Yep. So if you have, if you're unfortunate enough to have the 100,000, the 100 year old oak tree exactly 100 feet back, you know, but inside on the right away, you can't cut it. And if it cuts into your solar field, too bad, so sad, right? It's <laughs> sort of balancing the neighbor's interests, right? Anyway, so I thought we should do that. And then the last sentence could say, adequate erosion control measures shall be provided for all pro pro proposed land clearing. That, that was a big problem with 2020. Mm -hmm. until they pulled the rocks out, they filled the wetland. Yep. Like, oh my God. All right, so anyway, yeah, right, nothing changes then. Some of these, the writing's different because they were actually patched in in prior amendments, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so modifications 23.11.2 are just uh, added, including the addition of battery energy storage facilities after all material modifications, mm -hmm. including whatever we're, we've now calling it, right? Battery yeah, energy, BESS, -E right? Mm -hmm. So that has to go there. Same thing with uh, removal requirements under one. Uh, so 23, removal requirements. 1A, physical removal of all large scale ground mounted fuller da -da -da -da, structures and equipment, including this in, uh, equipment, solar battery installations. I put it after equipment. And then security barriers and transmission. It's a decommissioning, right? So you got the decommissioning activity. So that would be it. If you want to go with the Band-Aid approach. No, we came up with a new name for it. <laughs> Incremental improvement. Incremental. Right? I couldn't remember what it was. The incremental. It doesn't, it doesn't prevent clear cutting, but it does limit it to five acres, right? So you're not going to have. So I think it. It's, it's good for the year. It's, yeah, for what right. we're it's also subject to the public hearing, so people came in and that was something that they strongly advocated for. That's why we have public hearings. So. Okay. There are a lot of other good. You could keep my list, my wish list in this. 
you want to go on, uh, do well, something more with it. We'll just call you back when we have no. more discussion. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's certainly not our final pass through because th this is what we would vote on tonight, assuming someone makes a motion, is to transmit it to the select board for them to transmit it back to us to hold for public hearing. So um, we would get another pass through for the public hearing where we would also receive public comments. So if there were modifications that we mm -hmm. needed, uh, minor tweaks, we could make amend. So. Uh, would uh, is there any further discussion? Or would anybody like to make the motion? I will make that back? motion, sir. To what do you want for wording? Approve our uh, updated solar bylaw. Transmit the proposed solar bylaw okay. changes to the select board for review. Uh, do you have other specific words you need on that, or? Um, that's fine. Okay, that's, that's, that's the motion. And do, you want to <laughs> in, do, you, do you need to end schedule for a public hearing, or do you? No, nope, they they send it back to us, and then we do okay. that. Okay. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Okay, here in a first and a second. Any further discussion? All right, let's have the vote. Schneider aye. Withdraw aye. Holman's aye. Demelia aye. Monroe aye. Motion carries. It'll be transmitted mm -hmm. to the select board to then have them transmit it back to us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the, the hard work on that. And wow. we're not going to throw out the rest of the stuff. We're going to use it. But that's. I'm very happy. I feel. That's, that's awesome. Like, you know, you worry about the, the problems. Law after Alice. We'll call it the Alice Solar Dialogue. Pay me a large consulting fee, you know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Just kidding. We'll pay you three times what we're getting paid. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, 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 we'll give you three times what you're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, that's. There you go. All right, oh. so moving down the list, we have discussion of correspondence on marijuana uh, odor complaints. Now, there are a couple letters that were sent from the Board of Health mm -hmm. to the, uh, the special permit holders for outdoor cannabis cultivation. Uh, now, just as a matter of history, the, um, the Board of Health chair had reached out to see if we wanted to comment on that in October. I said yes. We should. We would like to comment on that. Please let us know as there's drafts and as things go forward. And then the first thing I heard about it was these letters that were sent out by the Board of Health. Um, with that said, uh, the Board of Health has concurrent jurisdiction with us on some things and separate jurisdiction. So. They, they do have original jurisdiction for certain types of nuisance, nuisance complaints. Um, what they don't have is authority over special permits. And there was some discussion about uh, possible ramifications for the special permit in those letters. Uh, that is not within the scope of authority for the Board of Health. Uh, that is exclusive jurisdiction of the Planning Board. Um, there was a select board meeting last week where I was reporting our changes to um, to the zoning bylaws, and I was asked by the chair, who was Katie Filling at the time, and Nate, if I could hang around and comment on what's going on with the marijuana complaints. So uh, I did, uh, and, and I spoke to it the best I could in the moment, talking about the history of the special permits and. Um, and talking about what we had received for complaints, because just to remind everybody, in the special permits, if we receive three credible complaints, we're supposed to hold a public meeting uh, to discuss those complaints and mitigation measures. Uh, and as of the time of the select board hearing, the planning board had only received two credible complaints. We never received a third one, so we never scheduled a meeting on that. Uh, since the select board meeting, the, uh, the Board of Health has sent over uh, additional credible complaints uh, reaching us to the three uh, but going back to the select board meeting they had asked if uh, if we would commit uh, if receiving those complaints to hold hearings or rather hold a meeting jointly with the Board of Health uh, to talk about the odor complaints and uh, talk about mitigation measures and see if we can have a session where we can try to get everybody closer to being on the same page and having some reasonable expectations. So I had said at the meeting, if we do get three complaints, yeah, we'll do that because that's what's in our special permits and that's our job. So we have those. So uh, we will be scheduling a, uh, a public meeting in the near future to invite the applicants. 
Um, Do you say that's going to be a joint special permits public meeting? Yes, there is a request to make that a joint public meeting with the uh, the Board of Health. Um, so we'll be uh, we'll give everybody an opportunity to uh, to speak at that and move forward from there. I'd like to request that the uh, document that we have on our drive, the marijuana odor complaint. I'm having difficulties. I think you may. You're going to open it either? No, I couldn't. The, the marijuana order complaint, uh, which is a PDF file. Yeah. We have some issues trying to open it up, so I don't even have. I have a book. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. Before we, I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing that you have probably all three and therefore that's best, that have met the threshold. I'd like to get the details on those. Okay. We'll absolutely make them available for everybody. Thank you. So uh, while Mark's taking a, a quick look at that, any other thoughts or questions or concerns on that? I just think there's got to be case law on that. We should be aware of it. It is all very new. I did. And also the regulations, the marijuana regulations should be looked at. Because I think there is an argument that it's, it's not farming. You know, there's those cases that say it's not farming. But it is like it is kind of like the manure on the field. It is a necessary ingredient. A necessary. You can't grow it without the odor. So I mean, we had really extensive discussions mm -hmm. when we had these guys. So I mean, if they are planting the lower, the lowest odor plant, which we required, right? And it's still no. We just simply odor. said no. We all, if I remember correctly, I think what we said is, is they would not be planting what are known as skunk varieties. That's right. That is it. We did not qualify no, anything but the. No, I think we did. No, I don't know, we, we so we had written it as skunk varieties, and I can't remember if it was indica or sativa. We but did. Have we specified the yes. the dominant strain. The dominant right. strain, but yeah. we didn't say anything that yeah. it had to be the least. And that also came out of a special permit. And correct me if I'm wrong. But that was yeah, the purpose that's... of selecting that, right? Right. I mean, Incorrect. I don't know if they're in compliance with a special permit. I mean, we don't have control over. Well, she's arguing in her letter we do, because the bylaw, the our general bylaws, say for protection of the public. Yep. I, I believe I, we, during our discussions and during the, the, the permit process, uh, they said the orders are coming from when they actually grind up the product and do whatever they're doing to it. And that's why for two months you get the strong yeah. smell. So I, don't, I don't believe it's the I don't want to go too far into substantive discussions on this because we have not invited the permit right. holders to okay. be okay. for themselves. It was a jurisdiction thing. It was yeah, different. and uh, I, I, I do agree. Uh, conceptually with what everyone's saying that yeah there's also some homework that we need to do going into this yes. and that um, we have some homework that we need to go into um, what are you saying Mark? Um, there's a bunch of individu individual documents in that complaints holder now that you can okay well you have enough here thank you yeah and no, like I said I, I, I don't those. I don't want to go into any of those individually without having the permit holders here okay. because I don't want to yeah, be yeah, make so. talking about somebody without giving them their due process uh, but they're uh, they're in the folder and I wanted to give everybody an update on the status yeah, I, I, I still see them there but we cannot well, open it. what happens can. is we get this here okay. so it's the fact that it's a PDF file Somehow, some PDF files we can open. There are others that we cannot open. Yeah, they're opening for me. I got them too. Yeah. You can open them. I got it. I don't know. What's Maybe you tried the same one. Try the refresh. All right. Well, so we'll we'll have to figure it out. We're we're okay. not going to go through them in detail tonight because we don't yeah, have the permit right. Okay. Okay. Any anything else on that? You right. skipped something on the agenda, though. What? Oh, review of other zoning changes requiring town meeting vote. Uh, I just, I just, I, sorry, did you, that was just, that was only on the agenda because I wanted to tell you that I made one small change after the last time you discussed it, when we sent it to the select board, on the 
on the item about wireless towers in the residential zone, we had made changes to say, what we had discussed was saying, subject to Article 18, the wireless. Right. Um, in addition to having said, uh, only on certain lots as specified as, uh, as, 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 <laughs> as per the wireless overlay district. I just simplified it all and said, subject to Article 18. So you're, so you're covered in case we make other changes to Article 18. <laughs> and I, and I <laughs> saw that they came back with some analysis as to what those lots were. Yes. Yeah. Separate issue. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, that was the only reason that I had it on the agenda, unless you want to add something. Yep. And the, uh, the select board did vote to transmit it back to us to hold for public hearing. We will be holding it for public hearing on March 16th. March 16th, our, so our next meeting. And uh, I'm looking forward to finally having those corrections made. Can I take just a moment before yep. you move on? Because I'm going to kill myself if I do not get these signatures that I've been <laughs> chasing for a month. <laughs> So that moves us down to inventory of all known adopted regulations not contained directly in the zoning bylaws. So this is a request from Mark uh, to put together and make sure we have all of our regulations available Do we have to sign uh, because no, I'm, I'm not even sure what all of our regulations are. So I think we're going to be looking towards Alice for some recollection on this. The yeah. only other regulations <laughs> that I'm aware of are the gravel pit regulations. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of the excavation. Uh, I'm aware of subdivision. Subdivision. And then we had, did do um, operation, operating procedures. I believe that that exists, and I may even have seen it once. <laughs> we talked about it. I remember working on that, but I don't. Um, I can give you a copy. There you go. And you can. So the question was, was did anybody know of anything else <laughs> other than those three? <laughs> I just send this down. Here you go. That's I can probably send you a, a, a um, Word document with them too if you write me. Okay. All right. So. Not really. That's. Is that uh, that cover you? Yep. Okay. Uh, so next down the, the list is uh, assign a representative to the Massachusetts Joint Transportation Committee uh, because there is about to be a, uh, an open seat. That's one of the roles that Alice fulfills for us. Uh, and Alice, can you tell us a little bit about what that is? It's and a what um, you do? meeting. It occurs at two o'clock in the afternoon. So if you want to join it, um, it's a virtual meeting. And they talk about, it's where, it, this is the group that puts together what improvements the, the state's going to fund. I mean, that's just, it does a lot of other things too, but that's its basic main thing, right? So, um, you know, I've been watching the town center sort of go through that, and now the Burnshirt Bridge go through it. But they also do intersection designs, like the one. So it's really nice to know from a planning point of view what's on the list. And then also, um, they do do other things. They talk about MART, which is a continual problem, you know, uh, which I, I've tried to resolve with them. So I guess it touches on some other issues. The MART problem is that, you know, it's supposed to provide transportation for the people that live in um, the elderly, that live in uh, the senior housing over there. But they can't really get them to the doctors and back because the band pick up at different times and they're trying to get small. You know, just just a lot of things. They also talk about every grant that relates to transportation that becomes available. So if you wanted to get a sidewalk sidewalk grant for to bake sidewalks by the school, you know, a lot of stuff. I, I think it's worthwhile. It's once a month. It's two o'clock on Tuesdays, and I've forgotten what which Tuesday it is. But it makes a difference to anyone that wants to take it up. Yeah, they actually had one today at 2 o'clock. Which I didn't at make, I'm sorry to say. Most of them I have made over the last few years. But yeah. 
it's pretty technical. If you have any knowledge of like engineering, it would be would be helpful. But not everybody does on the committee. But a lot of people attend them actually. Every town's supposed to have a rep. Yeah, it it does potentially mean uh, opportunities for a decent amount of money for the town. So it is a pretty important role. And um, I guess related to this, I've been. I've been taking more steps to be more active within the commission that that runs MRPC, uh, and I've been looking to get our second seat on the commission to be also more active. So it's a pretty big part of of what our strategy as a town needs to be in order to go after dollars. So we we do need somebody to attend this. I do not have the bandwidth to take this on and work with all of the other initiatives with MRPC. So I really need um, a member or associate member uh, <laughs> who... How long members? do the me meetings typically they, not? They're not long, not like long. 45 minutes at the most, I would say. The most important thing and is And they get canceled. They don't meet in the summer. They don't meet Christmas. It's not a huge lift. Yeah, it's banker schedule. But the most important thing is to listen and be like, that sounds like a chance to get money. I should tell Nate about that. That, that that's ultimately the most important thing that needs to happen at that meeting. You're like, oh, I should find Nate and Travis and tell them about this thing I just heard. That's ultimately the, the thing that we need the person who does that to do for us. So it's usually a Tuesday at 2. I think it is Tuesday at 2. No, it's today. It's Thursday. No, today's Wednesday. But yeah, it is usually a Tuesday at 2. It is usually a Tuesday. MRPC has been jumping around on their schedule lately which has been a little frustrating because that's ultimately why we moved our first meeting because they're supposed to have the commission meeting on okay. the first Thursday of every month and then they haven't done that the last two months <laughs> so hopefully they go back to that I would like to get involved here because I kind of know a lot of what's going on in the town too but I don't have time to be officially there because a lot of times I can. I'm on the road. Um, I, I don't know if that's one that we get to set an alternate for. No. We do get... Um, I don't know either. The invites do get sent to, I think, all of the MR... Everyone who's on the MRPC list. So I get the invite even though it's not me, and I think Nate gets a copy of the invite. So I think what we can do is we can also, in addition to whoever does this, we can set a policy where we send that invite out to the entire board and as long as there are not three of us that show up to it, whoever wants can listen in on it. It's a public meeting. Oh, yeah. but, but we do need somebody to be the official person mm -hmm. and, and the person where the buck stops at. So. Does she get paid a buck? <laughs> I mean, to ask the town. <laughs> it's budget season. <laughs> But it would be very helpful. It's smack dab in the middle of my work day, so I would have to see what kind of strings I could pull. I don't think I have to pull very hard. <laughs> um, Wait for a lunch. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I will think about it. I'll let you know. Okay, a couple days. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll put on the agenda for the next meeting, and Erica will think about it. I'll, uh, I'll send you over the information from okay. the last meeting, too, um, because a lot of it you can also get uh, from just looking through the information and then just listening in and then being like, hey, Hubbard's thinking get money from this. Okay, they, uh, I'd love to they don't do any kind of recording yeah. of those kind of meetings, do they? I don't think they do. I've been trying to find that, and I wish they did. Well, you they do have minutes. Yeah. All right. That they post. So... That is the end of the regular scheduled agenda. So matters not reasonably anticipated by chair. No, this is not. This is not, this is not unanticipated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do. I do know there's an executive session on the tower on Monday, right? Is right. That, that's. You can. I believe we can get you to join that as an invitee because you're all. Well, you're a named party. I'm you're named on, you're party. on the. So. What? You can come to that meeting. <laughs> Let's go I out on the limb. You're a named sure party. You got a quorum. <laughs> I don't even know. So that. we. Well, I had a discussion about that with Nate. I don't. It. We should get a quorum for that meeting, 
we weren't able to confirm that 100% we need one, but we might need to have a vote to approve a possible agreement. My intent is to go. That's as much as I can promise. Yeah, so I, I will definitely be able to make it assuming everything works out with childcare. <laughs> Um, I, so, I want to okay. go. I saw you should be there for like 7-ish, right. right? Or a little before 7? Yeah, 7-ish seven is when we would expect. Yeah. Okay. All so right. we, yeah, we, we definitely should get three people in case they need a vote to approve anything. My intent so. is to go, but, you know, stuff comes I up. I to go to call. I can okay. get fire, accident, anything, so. But, yeah, so that will be next <coughs> Monday. Um, their meeting, is their meeting start at 6 or 6.30? Either way, I, I sent a calendar invite out to everybody and the calendar yeah, invite. Yeah is for when Nate expected us to get called, not when the meeting starts. The meeting starts before then. Um, I'm going to make this March 2nd then, because I was here today's the first, right? And I, I probably won't show up at the Vertex meeting. I just, can you, you, one of you guys can fill me in, right? So uh, just known for the record, uh, I have just received a letter uh, addressed to the chair from Alice Lidahl uh, resigning her position on the planning board uh, effective March 2nd 2023 including her position representing the planning board on the affordable housing committee so we'll need to come up with somebody for that next meeting too I was hoping we get somewhere because they didn't meet for six months you know to leave it in a better slot but they only met once so I have received letter of resignation. I don't believe we have to vote on acceptance or anything like that. <laughs> I believe the letter. No, I believe. I vote against. <laughs> yeah. Acceptance, no. So uh, I, I guess we have to vote on this, sir. Really? Yes. No, you don't. It's like the South California. Out. You can check it. You can never check it out. <laughs> so uh, I would. I've had a great time, you guys. I just can't. I can't Alice, do daycare and do this. I'm 70 Alice, years I, old. I appreciate and it's all you much. did. <laughs> you came in this board without any background knowledge of the planning board, and she really directed us and did a lot of work. And thank God she was good with uh, her words and her litigations for us to keep us in the <laughs> right. Because uh, a wild we, we ride. had we had some wild times. Thank you, Alice. Yeah, thank yes, you for thank you. all the work you've done. Thanks, guys. And I'll miss you guys, honestly. Maybe I'll just come now and then. Yeah. <laughs> well, and if I... Uh, no, you won't. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> and I'll if you haven't... in bed at 9 o'clock, yeah. chasing a toddler. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't already heard, the, uh, the select board, upon hearing that you intended to resign from the planning board, decided that the dedication and this year's annual report will be to you for your service to the Are town. you kidding me? Really? Yeah. Oh. Wow. That was nice. Probably the biggest honor I've ever had. You know? <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Well, that's so, very sweet. So thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you mostly for getting me involved with the board and yeah. as chair. <laughs> yeah. You're not cursing. Yeah. I'm trusting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your so, work. Thanks, Alice. Really appreciate it. Miss you. That, that is a full agenda done effectively and efficiently. Wow. Alice, would you like to make your last motion? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I make a motion we adjourn. Not debatable. I'll suck that up. All right. Uh, let's have a vote. Steiger aye. Liptal aye. Holmes aye. Tamelli aye. Monroe aye. Congratulations we are for your retirement. <laughs>